subjective. You know, there are other people expressing their views about whatever to the rest of the world, you know. Uh, all I can tell you is that, you know, I'm a Black Panther, once a Panther, always a Panther. It's one of the proudest moments in my life. And I'm so happy now, it's taken 50 years, but the true image of the Black Panther Party is beginning to, to be uh, discovered by society. Uh, the contributions <laughs> Mr. Woodfox, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for all of your work. My name is Amber, and I do work around criminal justice system reform, and one thing I really struggle with is I believe we need to divest from the prison industrial complex and really invest in the things that we know help our communities thrive, and if we want to do something about jail conditions, as I understand it, that would require investing further resources to make sure that people have humane food, humane medical care, etc. So this is a tension I bump up against a lot in my work, and I'm curious if you have thoughts or reactions to that. Well, you know, fortunately, there are the many women and, and children who feel the same way you did. And to find those people, uh, or either, you know, by joining organizations, political organizations, or social organizations, or developing, or starting one yourself, and, and struggle, you know. Uh, there's no shortcut, you know. Change requires social struggle. Uh, you know, uh, I, I embrace the philosophy of materialism and dialectics, which teaches that contradiction is the motivation for change. So, you know, uh, what that means to me is that I don't see life as being black or white. I see life in constant transition and adjustments, you know. And so, you pretty much answer your own question, you know. You find uh, people that think like you, and, and you, you, you develop program policies and stuff, but I, you know, one thing I always say is that we have got to stop electing officials because we agree with one thing out of a hundred that they stand for. We have got to start doing research and find out everything that's possible about it because we, we are putting these people in a better powerful position. You know, and, and we should not, and you know, I think that uh, in time, the American citizens should make, develop a way to make it more easier to remove these politicians. When they become, you know, what, do you, what do you think about um, what she asked in terms of, you know, should we be focusing on kind of taking money out of prisons, you know, we have this overinflated prison system, or should we be trying to put more money in to, you know, improve conditions, or how do you deal with that kind of tension? Well, I think prison, you know, all, all social institutions, they start with oversight. Now, money, if it, it's not properly used, you know, or uh, if those who you give that money to are not held up accountable, or uh, as I said, just not make it easier to remove these people, you know, or uh, to punish these people, then, you know, uh, you just, you know, because what they call it inertia going around and around in circles, you know, so you, you have to, uh, the community through the public, uh, leaders or whatever have to be able to shape the narrative, shape the policy of the prison. You know, the one thing, the one question uh, and, and, and we, and the answer that we used to always tell the guy, you know, Angola has some of the most creative and talented people in the world. As a matter of fact, they have over, uh, they have uh, hobby craft festivals twice and each one of them makes over a million dollars. So that tells you the quality of the skill that these men and women have developed. My question is, why does a prison have to bring this out of an individual? Why not a high school, a junior high school, why not our public institutions are not designed to bring this skill this out of people? 